Welcome back, everybody, to Rob's Muddleworks. We are here at Backstage Live for a very special evening. A band that always has a special place in the heart of all the San Antonio metal fans. I have with me Mr. Joey Vera, the return of Joey Vera to Rob's Muddleworks of Fate's Warning. Joey, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you, sir. You know, it's been a long, long time, but um, I I'm so happy that uh, you're, you're still part of uh, Fate's Warning amongst all the other things that you do. Uh, yeah, uh, it's funny because uh, before we left on this run, I was like, how long have I been playing with Fates? And I added up all the years. 2007? Uh, or no. 2000? No, no, no. 96. Oh, really? 17 okay. years. Oh, wow. 17 years. Jeez. Yeah, it's it pretty crazy. Like I know, it's pretty crazy. So, yeah, we're glad to be back here. You know, it's hometown for uh, Ray Alder and Bobby Drazombek. So that's why they couldn't be here with us today. They're... <laughs> entertaining families and friends and stuff so I'm here to represent right. um, but yeah we're stoked to be playing here today well I mean when you talk about you know the, the, we're gonna talk about this lineup here in a little bit but when you talk about the longevity of a band like Fate's Warning and already with your long history with the band I think the first question that people wanna hear about is why did it take nine years for a new Fate's Warning record well, there's lots of reasons. Uh, a lot of other projects came in came in the way. Um, uh, Jim did an OSI record. Ray did a couple of Redemption records. I did an Armored Saint record, uh, and then we did the uh, Arch Matheos record. That was pretty much most of this lineup with John Arch. So that was all those things kind of combined. I don't know. It just was hard to like pin down, like focus on making this record. Um, so. That's kind of, you know, and added a bunch of touring, too. We played Europe, we play Europe at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. So that, you know, throw that in the mix, too. It was just tough to get it together, really. So finally, last year, Jim really kind of set aside time, and, and Ray came into the picture, and those two guys pretty much finished this record up. So is that kind of like, I guess that was going to be my follow-up, was like how did the, when, when the time was right, how did the machine finally start moving forward? Well, Jim's the, the, the main songwriter. He writes basically everything. There's a couple of things that were thrown in from Frank and even Bobby. But, um, and then Ray, you know, writes, was writing all the melodies and lyrics. And then I think there was even a couple of things, or one song that Kevin Moore even contributed to. But um, that's... That's pretty much how it starts. So it's you know music gets done, and Jim's pretty um, he's pretty thorough with uh, writing the demo process. So he writes, records everything at his house, and then ends up sending me parts in the end when they're ready. And so I kind of take it from there. I have a studio at my house. I did all my parts at my own place. So, so they sent me all the tracks at home, and then I I recorded all my own bass parts, and then would send it back through email and. It's pretty crazy, but that's how we do it. It seems, I mean, I, not too long ago, I was, was hanging with uh, Larry Berrigan from Hellstar. I was at his, at his home studio, and he was telling me that they do the same thing, and they're working on a new record, too. So it's really weird the way that uh, the writing uh, process has revolutionized uh, with technology. It's a great thing. It's beautiful, um, especially because now people can be all over the country and work together. And that's the thing with this band. You know, Jim still lives in the Northeast, and... Um, the rest of us are over here, you know, uh, I'm in California, Ray's in California, Bobby's in San Antonio, and Frank Oresti was in Connecticut, but he I, re recently relocated to California also, wow. so he's in San Francisco now, so we're just like all over the place. So, you know, like to get together and write and record and even practice is just, it's, it's not possible, I mean, right. it's very expensive. Right. So, you know, we, um, we just work around it the way we can, you know, in fact, whenever we tour, we we all send, send each other set lists. You know, these are the songs we're going to learn, and then it's all up to us to do the homework. So then we show up, go to like Amsterdam or something, and then we usually get one rehearsal in before. So we just rehearse once, and then we start a tour. That's usually how we always do it. Well, you you guys are professionals, so. Yeah, it's just you've got to do your homework. That's all. <laughs> if you don't do your homework, it shows. Well, especially with the stuff that uh, Fate's Warning has historically been known for as pioneers of the progressive metal uh, scene. So I think fans were really happy to see the band reunite, uh, release uh, a new piece of material. Uh, Darkness in a Different Light is the new release. Everyone out there, in case you don't have it or live under a rock, it came out in September. Um, 
when I listen to this record, I, I kind of feel that it has its own flavor, definitely. So uh, as, as someone who's really close to the painting, what do you think about it? I mean, how, does it, how do you gauge it when you think about uh, darkness in a, in a different light versus uh, maybe past releases, especially due to the hiatus? Well, I think that, uh, you know, again, every Fates record is always this kind of progression away from the previous record, you know. Um, but I think with this record, I think having maybe a longer period between records, we kind of got away from this, we, like, like X and Disconnected had a little bit of a kind of a tool thing sort of influence in there. And I think with this record, we kind of got away from that and went a little bit more I don't know, I mean, for lack of a better word, progressive. I mean, some of the songs have tons of odd times signatures and a lot of parts are kind of difficult to play. Right. Um, so it, it, this, is, this record is a more challenging probably to listen to, but also to play. So that's kind of was my take on it. Like, I think that it is a nod to so the more progressive stuff where they kind of came from, you right. know, back in their roots. But also, you know, it's it's still modern and has tons of melodies and stuff that makes it modern. So it's kind of a good, I don't know, it's kind of a good mix of old and new, I think. Yeah, when, when I listen to it, it's like, it kind of has like this, you know, oh, Ray's voice is always going to have like this melodramatic type of tone to it. But it's like a mid-tempo kind of groove in there and, and uh, you know, and then it kind of explodes a little bit with some solo work in there. So I, I really have enjoyed it. And I think fans around the world have enjoyed it too. I mean, it landed 162 on the Billboard here in the U.S. and did even better in Europe. So, I mean, the fans uh, have, have obviously embraced it. So now, uh, you know, uh, obviously uh, uh, you guys are, are out there supporting it. What, what's it been like, you know, to play these songs live in front of fans now? I mean, we love it because we, again, we, we've had such a long period between records so for us we've kind of been playing the same songs for the last 10 years so it's, you know we've had trouble like mixing up our set to keep it interesting for ourselves I mean the fans most fans they always want to hear the familiar songs the songs that are popular to them and you know this the kind of the staples and we have to play those songs but we try to mix up the set with things that keeps it interesting for us but you know we only had so much to choose from so you know, it's for us. It's great. We get to play three new songs. It's, we got three new songs in the set now, and um, you know, uh, next time we come out, we're gonna probably m throw in another one. So, it's awesome for us. I mean, and Fate songs aren't really short. <laughs> no, I mean, in the first song, you know, we're opening with, you know, uh, we're opening, you know, with a new song, and it's not a long, it's not a short song, and, and you know, it's, you know. So you know we're gonna it's 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 hard to put in a bunch of new songs when they're all really long, but you know not all of them are long. We have a couple, like five or six minutes in there. So and then of course you have to appease all those old fans who are screaming for you know Spectre Within, Awaken the Garden, all the old yeah. stuff that they want to hear. Yeah, we get that a lot, you know. But we have a we have a hard time uh, pulling stuff that's way way old out. Um, there's just this we try to keep some continuity with the music that we're playing. We are doing one thing from Ray's era, old, but um, you know, again, we, this this band kind of has its own has a new life. This new life started with this band, I think, around uh, Perfect Symmetry, and um, you know, it's hard to, to go back and, right. and incorporate stuff that's prior to that and make it sound like it's the same group. You know, I mean, we're just trying to have some continuity what we're doing out there. But I think one of the things that kind of attributes to what I spoke about is that, you know, when you talk about a band like Fate's Warning that's been around for 30 plus years and you have fans who've followed the band for since the beginning. I mean, we're all getting, we're all getting a little up there and enjoying it. I was especially happy um, when I saw the lineup of this band. You know, to have Frank back, Frank Arresti, uh, the other guitarist, back in the band. And then, of course, you know, uh, Bobby Jarzombek and... You know, it's, 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 and you, you know, I mean, it's like, when I looked at this lineup, I was like, man, this is like the coolest lineup this band's ever had, you know? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, Bobby came into the fold, Bobby and Frank, right around the same time, uh, came into the fold around 2006, something like that. And uh, ever since, ever since we were, we've been doing dates since then, mostly all in Europe, though. So we've been, we've been playing Europe a lot as this lineup, and we just, we all get together, like totally great. Everyone, you know, loves each other. We have total respect for each other. Everyone's great musicians, and 
it's just a great vibe this this lineup right now so we were just dying like we got to make a record with this lineup like this is you know it's long enough already let's just get this done so here we are and it's 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 awesome to have this out and we're kind of you know we're missing frank right now he has um obligations with his with his employment he got a great job and relocated him out of state and everything so he wasn't able to to join us we have a guy filling in for us he's doing actually a great job mike abdo from uh, massachusetts and he, he's doing a great job filling in for frank but you know um we're just carrying on as if you know we're the unit and you know playing the new tunes and we're just glad to be out here we're, we're, we're glad people hung around for as long as they did waiting for us so <laughs> thank you guys for being patient and you know I, I you know people might around the world who will see this and you kind of feel like oh man you know those guys over there at Rob's Motorworks, they're biased because the, you know, two of their prodigal sons are in the band, you know, Ray Alder and, and Bobby Jarzombic. But, uh, yeah, I mean, how can, how can San Antonians not, Texans not love uh, this lineup of Fate's Warning? So now, I mean, really, you've, you've been on the road in this headline North American track. Um, it's almost nearing it. I think it has, like, maybe ten more days to go. Um, so what, what, what lies ahead for, for touring, uh, maybe as you take a break for the holidays and come back next year? Do you have, you have any plans yet? Well, we don't have anything solid. We're working on something in April, possibly going back to Europe again. And then there's also talk of trying to hit some European festivals in the summer. But again, nothing's confirmed yet. So we just kind of have that stuff in the works. You know, um, we'd love to get on a support act with another band. That would be ideal for us to go if we go out in the States again. Something like that would be ideal for us because we already, you know, we're just finishing this up, this headline tour now. We don't really need to go out and do it again. Right. Um, so if we can get on a support act as a support slot for another band, that would be a great thing for us. And we might consider doing something like that. Um, and in the meantime, we have, uh, I think there's, a, there's an official video for Firefly um, coming out soon. Um, I think we just approved it a couple, about a week or two ago. So. Cool. You should be seeing that coming out pretty soon. And also, the the first video for I Am is already out there. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, was that video? It's a live video. Yeah. Was that video shot on this tour? It, no, that shot. It was shot on the European leg oh. of this tour um, a month ago in Germany. And um, it's it's you know, you can't fool anybody. It's it's the audio from the record, but it's footage from right. the, the show. Right. So it's a cool video. It's like um, you know, it's something we put together real quick to get something out there, you know. The Firefly video is a little bit more of a production okay. thing, so there's kind of like storyline going on and all kinds of you stuff. Is some so. acting in there? Nah, <laughs> no. Someone else is, not me. Okay. So, I mean, as I, as I shared earlier, the band has had a very long career. So, in, you know, now you guys are actively again in the scene. What should fans expect for the future of Fate's Warning? So, basically what I'm asking is after, let's say after this cycle is done, uh, for this record, will you guys again take a long hiatus or continue to work? Have have those discussions even taken place? And and I know may, you know primarily that that decision may lie in, in the lap of Jim Matheos, But um, what what have you heard? Yeah. Well, we we have actually talked about you know not waiting another ten years. Yeah. Um, so you know taking that into consideration, we've we've talked about um, doing something sooner than later. You know, not waiting so long. So we, we have talked about you know working on a new record relatively soon. I, and I'm, I'm not saying we're going to go home and start writing over Christmas break, but... No hiatus. No, I mean, there's no plan to do that. You know, we, um, we have a new record label, so, um, you know, everything seems to be going okay. You know, it's, you sort of have an unknown situation when you change labels. Things that be, seem to be going pretty good so, for, so far. They're supportive and everything. So we, you know, we, yeah, we, we want to make another record. We, we truly do. And, so. and the label is Inside Out, is that correct? And, they, and I mean, obviously, I'm, I've seen a lot of pub for the record. I mean, they they put out, for all you people out there who dig vinyl, they put out like all this cool yellow, red, and black vinyl. And and so, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. That's killer for the people out there who collect, uh, continue to collect the hard copy music. So, um, well, that's great. I'm glad to hear that uh, you guys will continue to stay busy. Any last words, Joe? Anything I missed about Fate's Warning or even about you personally? 
Uh, no, not really. I mean, we're just we're glad to be out again, and like again, I, I say it again. We thank the fans for holding on. You know, I mean, it's a long time waiting for this, but uh, we're really, you know, we've met a lot of people on this this whole run since even since Europe, and um, it's been really cool uh, meeting everybody and the response on the new record's great. So, very much, uh, you know, very much a big thank you to the fans for hanging in there and waiting for us. Hopefully we don't have to wait another nine years, but uh, you know, it's it's been really really cool so far. Thanks, Joey. I appreciate your time, sir. As always. It's always a pleasure to see you. I always love talking to you because you have such this good, positive, vibrant vibe about you. You always have been. I think that's why everybody likes you. So uh, thanks for, for coming back on the show and uh, taking the time uh, this evening. Remember, everyone out there, the brand new one from Fate's Warning is called Darkness in a Different Light. Go out there, pick it up right now. You saw the man, Joey Vera of Fate's Warning, right here on Rob's Metalworks.